On 2SM and the Super Network, High Tide. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. Welcome back to our six o'clock hour. It's a five minutes after six here on High Tide. Grant Boyden and Kieran Ricky are with you this morning. The Sydney Harbour, Pittwater and Botany Bay forecast for today. West, westerly below 10 knots are the winds becoming north to north westerly uh, by early morning. Seas below 0.6 of a metre and sunny. Tomorrow, northwesterly 10 to 15, tending westerly in the afternoon, decreasing to around 10 knots. Uh, seas 0.5 of a metre and sunny conditions there as well. The offshore report. West to northwesterly, about 10 kilometres an hour, increasing 10 to 15 in the morning. Winds tending, tending north to northwesterly in the afternoon, reaching about 20 knots. <coughs> Pardon me. A seas below a 1 metre, increasing to 1 to 1.5 offshore in the early evening. The swell will be from the south at a metre. For Sunday, a northwesterly of 15 to 20 knots. And for Monday, a westerly of 15 to 25 knots. I'll go the 15. Don't like the 25 too much. <laughs> I hope that's modified as we get a little bit closer to it. Time to head off to the Shooters, Fishers and Farmers Party and get Kieran Ricky a little bit fired up for this morning. Mark uh, Nasiak, good morning. How are you? Good morning, gentlemen. How are you guys? I'm I'm living in fear, to be honest, because I know that uh, you're going to fire Kieran up on me now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, look, I, uh, I'm already it, fired it, up. It, it's really, it's really, the, it's really the government that's probably going to. Um, it's stupid environmental groups that are probably going to get fired up. But um, yeah, there's a couple of things, a couple of things going on that are a bit, a uh, bit silly. Um, one is this. Um, renewed push to remove shark nets um, across New South Wales beaches. A um, environmental group has called for it in a report and um, unfortunately the report's sort of riddled with sort of data integrity issues and they talk about um, you know juvenile juvenile sharks uh, not being the ones that do the most attacking and uh, all the compelling research I've seen actually says the exact opposite. It is actually the juvenile and sub-adult Sharks that do the attacking, and um, and that's been confirmed by DPI. I asked them questions many, oh, a couple of years ago, over a twenty-year period. You know how many great white shark um, attacks that occurred, you know, in New South Wales, and there was sixty-nine, and a hundred percent of them were done by uh, juvenile sub-adult sharks. And I guess the ridiculous uh, point on the other side of this is that the CSIRO, when they're counting. Uh, great white sharks or any shark don't actually include juvenile and sub-adults in their count. Um, well, why? Well, why would that well, that's, be? That's, well, that's a really good question. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the cynic in me says the only the reason why they don't count it is because then we'd know the true population and we'd, then we'd realise that the, the shark isn't endangered and environmental charities wouldn't be able to milk people out of money well, um, for a problem Mark? that doesn't exist. Mark, all they've got to do is go and ask the, the consistent offshore fishermen and go and ask the commercial fishermen how much shark activity or how much the shark activity is affecting the catch. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. Like that's, you know, when the science on this is so poor, I go to citizen science and, you know, and as you said, the commercial fishermen are telling me that, the, you know, there's an increased problem. The spiros are telling me there's an in, increased problem encounters specifically with grey nurse sharks. I mean, with the spiros, but also great whites. Um, so yeah, I go to I go to citizen science. I go to the people I can trust, and that's the the reckoned commercial fishermen, and they're telling me there's a problem. Um, and if there's a if there's an in, increased uh, population of of these sharks floating around our New South Wales coastline, why are we removing? Uh, safety measures, especially when the alternatives aren't that effective either. You know, the smart drop, smart drop lines are anything but smart. The, you know, the sharks have learnt to actually just avoid um, those smart drum lines. It's actually been cited in WA studies. So uh, we shouldn't be removing these nets um, at all. There's lies, lies and statistics, isn't there? And 
You know, like, I, I'm, I'm not condoning this, but there was a, a Facebook post going around that um, 10% of road accidents involve uh, alcohol, uh, 90% don't. So don't be part of the 90% drink alcohol and drive. Now, obviously, that's not something that's endorsed, and it's a joke. It's meant as humour. It's not meant yeah. as seriousness. But it just gives you a classic example of how you can take a statistic and just bend it around to suit something totally illogical. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, yeah, and, that's, and that's what a lot of these environmental charities uh, are doing. Um, and when there is when there is such data integrity issues, we shouldn't be making uh, decisions based on on that data. We should sharpen our pencils and do better. And that's that's what I'm certainly calling for. Um, so that's that's one thing to get your your blood a bit warmer, uh, uh, Kieran. <laughs> The other, yeah. the other, now comes the, other, the major one. Yeah, the other the other thing to warm you up on this uh, brisk morning is um, the I, mean, I think probably last year. Remember that um, I was pushing uh, for better rock fishing safety laws to include you know appropriate footwear and and have a sensible discussion about the fact that there isn't a proper regulated life jacket that is suited for uh, rock fishing and. The previous government, in an attempt, I guess, to try and shut me up, um, gave $205,000 out of the Recreational Fishing Trust to Surf Life Saving Australia um, to run these rock fishing safety, uh, a rock fishing safety program, um, and then proceed to say that, you know, I was an idiot and, you know, I should be listening to Surf Life Saving. And lo and behold, they've rolled out their program and they've got training materials um, with pictures of rock fishermen wearing waders and gumboots. Um, and you, you would know that a lot of the rock fishing deaths that have occurred in New South Wales have been of people of non-English speaking background. And what are, what do people of non-English speaking background rely on when they have trouble reading? They look at pictures. pictures. Yeah. yeah. And so we've got this association that's supposed to be um, Mark, I, I don't. I don't want to detract anything from Surf Life Saving, right? Because no, they do no, a wonderful they're... job. But what in the bloody hell's it got to do with fishing? Absolutely, absolutely nothing. And so the government's the government's used Surf Life Saving as a political pawn um, to basically shut me up with this. With, you know, but shut me up from talking about rock dare fishing. How dare they? Then, how dare they take it out of the Recreational Trust Fund? The exactly. chairman yeah. and the people on board of the Recreational Fishing Trust need to be exonerated. Well, I don't know whether they actually even followed a proper process. Well, like somebody has to I, sign the cheque. Let me tell you, there's a well, couple of signatures might, have to go on it. Well, I think it might have just been a direct, direct ministerial sign-off because I, I can't see how anyone on that Recreational Fishing Trust uh, committee would have signed off on this and they certainly would be regretting it now seeing what's being produced. You know, it's just bloody... It's suicidal to put a bloody rock fisherman out there on the, on the rocks with a bloody full with, set of waders. With and waders and gum boots. <laughs> and, and, yeah, what do you... you know, Why what, don't we ask happen? him just to jump off the gap or something? Well, that's essentially what... That's essentially what um, is happening, and uh, you know, and the the re- re- sad thing is, um, this association has been used as a political pawn in all this, um, and they produce material. They they produced a program um, on something that, that it's beyond their expertise. It should have gone to people that are experts in rock fishing, um, and it hasn't. And now we've wasted two hundred five thousand dollars out of the the uh, Recreational Fishing Trust for a program that is totally ridiculous and, and actually downright dangerous and actually should should be stopped. Um, it, it should be it should be, ta- it should be taken off the market basically, um, and and if any money hasn't been spent, that should be recouped and put back in the trust. But weren't um, Surf Life Saving New South Wales uh, if they they were doing. I'm going off my memory here, Mark. That's why it's a bit slow with me getting this out. Weren't they doing um, uh, fishing uh, fishing course per se uh, for better um, 
rock fishing safety and, and part of that was if you went along, you got a life jacket? Is that still in operation or...? I'm, look, I'm not, I'm not too sure whether as part of this program people get a... Because you would have jacket. thought if you are going to give some sort of clothing out, that would be the first choice, yeah? Well, you think you, you think so. You certainly wouldn't be showing pictures of rock fishermen wearing... Waders. waders <laughs> and, gu- and gumboots. Um, I'm not too sure whether they are actually giving out uh, life jackets with um, this program. But I guess if they are... My, I'll find out. My, my, concern, my concern, again, is... What life jackets are you giving out? Because every every experienced rock fisherman knows that um, a lot of the life jackets aren't actually suitable um, for rock fishing because of just how they're designed and, and what happens when you get washed into the water uh, with them on. Um, great for retrieving bodies, not really great for saving yourself. So, um, yeah, it's it's something I'm going to be raising with the minister. Um, when we get into Parliament next week, because he's he's a classic example of 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 waste um, out of our recreational fishing trust. Um, no, not only waste; it's been put into a, a, a dangerous program that actually goes against um, rock fishing safety. Well, good luck with that. Hey, I want to know: Did you get your car keyed last Sunday? No, what? No, I did it. I I didn't, but I did hear. Um, that the friends of Bonner and Bonner Bay have been very, very busy putting nails in people's tyres. Are you kidding? And, and, and stealing people's, um, stealing people old, old, old people's fish out of their buckets, and and basically trying to bully people off the beach. They've um, been quite so, prolific in the local area too, uh, going door to door and being set up in locations to try and get people to sign their stupid partition as well. Yes, yeah, I did hear that too, where they were basically sh- shoving the petition in young people's faces, going, here, here, you've got to sign it, you got to sign it, you got to sign it. So the, f- the friends of Bong and Bong and Bay uh, are anything but friendly. I, w- I was going to get one. I, look, I, I'm a big believer, as a lover of broadcasting, as I have been since I was a kid, I am a big believer in giving both sides the opportunity to express their view. And obviously you've heard our view, and many yeah. would argue that it's bias. I went to their website. Absolutely no contacts for them. It's a couple of names up there of people involved, but no contacts. Facebook page, I couldn't get that to work. Like, come on, come on. If you if you're yeah. that committed, give it somebody. Give us a ring. Look, I'm not yeah, hard to find. You, you, give me a yeah. ring. I'll get you on the program. You can have your say. I won't. Uh, we will not attack you. We'll let you have your say. But, yeah, but I want to know why. One. I, I've got one question and one question only. If there's 10, 15, 20 people that are swimming there of a morning, what gives you the right to be able to take away an entire community's activity so you can do it? What makes you think you're that special? And if you've give, if it's a valid reason, I'll back them. But Yeah, but you know, I've always said if you have to go to such lengths where you're, where you're threatening people, abusing people, vandalising their cars. That's just disgusting. To, 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 if you have to go to those lengths to prove your point, your point's not worth proving. Yeah, that's just absolutely disgusting. By all means, stand there and protest and hold up signs or whatever the case may be, but defacing or damaging people's, that's where things can lead to very ugly scenarios. Because uh, one day, yeah, Fishos, who, I, you know... You carry an eyes when you go fishing and people are destroying your car and people, there's not everyone out there sane. You know what I mean? No, and look, I think that's what they're probably trying to bait people to do. Yeah, you're to probably to right. Reta- fishermen to retaliate. So I encourage fishermen not to retaliate. No, just report, no. Report, report the matters to police. But, um, and whether that's, that's road rage or anything, you don't retaliate. And you've been, you're up there on Sunday and you, you were chatting with these, uh, these fishos. They're just normal peeps. Uh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, there's you know, young young dads with their you know kids. You know, it's a family pastime. There's old people that have been there for years. Um, you know, there's people that have been, you know, that were also part of the the fishing cl- uh, the swimming club. You know, there used to be a, you know, it started as you know two two separate clubs that were sort of one and the same. There was the fishing side, and then there was the swimming side, and. Um, yeah, it's become sort of because of these essentially blow-ins 
in the last few years um, that have moved into the community has become very toxic mm. um, between those two groups. And it's, it's such a shame that they've actually... Yeah, got, to har- got to that. Got to that. And they've yeah. lived in harmony, harmonies for so many decades. Um, and it's just these blow-ins that have caused the problem. Kieran, when you put your soapbox away, could you put mine away with yours as well, please, for next week? Mm. No, Till tomorrow. Just my, I'm, just packing my, I'm just packing mine up now. <laughs> <laughs> see you, Mark. Thanks for your time. No, I see you, guys. Shooters, you, Farmers and Fishers Party are looking after us all at the moment. It has to be said. Uh, that's not just politics and playing uh, favouritisms. It's just how it is. I'm going to take a quick break. When we come back, I'm going to catch up with Swanee. Talking sport. So I managed to work out how to listen to you fellas when I was over, oh, over really? in Malaysia. So good to come back at three o'clock and listen to Tungsy's one liners, Pappy pronouncing the names of all those boys that I couldn't even half get my tongue around. Graham explaining all the complicated rules in layman's terms and then of course Robbo. <laughs> if Tigers don't win, he always takes his happy pills before he comes on. Weekdays from three. I'll be saying, what on earth? Is the world coming to an Aussie in charge of Tottenham Hotspur? And it's not any club. We are talking Tottenham, Tottenham. Hotspur. This is 2SM. So I got invited out to watch the State Origin. Mate, you wouldn't believe it. Now, I've been kicked out a few pubs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> this bloke shut the pub down at 9.30. As soon as the game was over, he kicked everybody out. Absolutely yeah. classic. <laughs> Queensland are the biggest certainties to ever go around oh, in a uh, football okay. game next game. The biggest certainties yeah. in Origin history. Biggest, biggest certainties to ever in... go around in a region. Wow. Talking sport, weekdays from three. Sustained performance in footy is more than just one great game. It's about playing consistently game after game, season after season. Host Plus has delivered strong performance over the long term with top returns over 20 years. A top performing super fund over the long term, that's a plus. Issued by Host Plus PTY Limited. Super ratings SR50 balance index January 2023. General advice only. Consider the relevant Host Plus PDS and T&D at hostplus.com.au. Past performance is not a reliable indicator of future performance. Search compare Host Plus today. Hey, it's Candy here. As a presenter in the world of sport, I see many powerful performances. Now, thanks to Azito, we're helping power your next DIY project. Did you know Azito's 18-volt range is powered by Einhell? German-designed quality, driving innovation and performance. So you can power over 85 cordless tool and garden products with the same battery. Azito, powering DIYers all day, every day. Exclusively available at Bunnings Warehouse. O-M-F. After the big game, every sports fan deserves to kick back and relax. And what better way to do that than with a mattress from OMF? Get ready to unwind in style with the ultimate in comfort and relaxation. So, what are you waiting for? Head on over to OMF and check out their game changing range of mattresses. Shop online or at over 50 locations nationwide, 100% Australian designed and owned. O-M-F. Where comfort meets sport. Have you been charged with a criminal offence? Need legal representation or advice? With our dedicated criminal team, you can have the peace of mind that you need on any day at any time. Contact our criminal law team at Brydens Lawyers today on 1800 017 017 or visit brydens.com.au. Available 24 hours a day. For expert legal representation, save 1800 017 017 to your phone. Brighton's Foyers, we do support you when you need it most. 2SM, Sydney's Talking. 2SM, 1269. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I Tops of 19 degrees, 20 degrees as you make your way up the New South Wales coast towards Queensland. We'll find out how things have been during the week when we catch up with Paul Burt in the uh, final segment of this hour. But right now, let's find out how things are at Marucci Doorway. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. When is it ever cool at Marucci Door? Oh, yesterday morning, four degrees. Four? Okay, I'm shutting up. That's 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 cold. Yeah, it's that's like minus cold. eight down here. <laughs> minus what? Minus eight. That's like about a minus eight. Four degrees up there. Is it like a minus eight degrees down here? Oh, well, this would be right there. Just, I just caught the back end of that last conversation. What was the problem with the fishers and the swimmers? Where was that at? Here in Sydney, the rock fishing that. The Recreational Trust Fund 
has given two hundred and five million to Surf Life Saving to promote rock fishing and clothing, like uh, waders and gum boots. That's what they want to promote that rock fishermen should wear. Gum boots, rock, yeah, waders and gum boots. Uh, yeah, if that's not. I, I said you might as well ask them to go and jump off the gap. Okay. <laughs> They're gone anyhow. They put that sort of stuff on. No, but something about them vandalising the cars or something. What? Oh, the vandalising of the cars. Yeah. Grant can tell you about that. Yeah, the, apparently. I don't know. I don't know firsthand, but apparently they've been doing things like keying cars and putting, you know. Uh, but who? 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 Who's doing that? Oh, the, the the people that don't want the fishers on their beach. Oh, okay. Which beach was that? You know? That's at Motovar. What is it? Bong, uh, Bongo, Bongo? Okay. I'll have to check the name of it for you. Yeah, don't matter. Yeah, they want to turn it into a marine park so that when they swim in the morning, they can see more fish. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, oh, that's, like... that's in Pitwater, isn't it? Well, Motorvale. Between yeah. Motorvale and Newport. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Maitland Bay. They turned that into a marine park because the whales used to stop and rest there. I fished there for years and never saw a whale in my life. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. All right, fellas. It's... Uh, 12 degrees this morning apparently which feels a bit brisk but um, yeah there's a light northwest of blowing around about 5 to 10 knots uh, it looks like today and tomorrow is going to be pretty good it's been good all week actually um, there's still a few pelagics around um, which is it's getting a bit late in the year but there's still a few out there the water's still pretty warm so keep an eye out if you're heading out for uh, any birds that are working and get the metal slugs in amongst them, you'll uh, shoot a long-tailed tuna and just the odd mackerel. Um, uh, generally, that's about it. There's just a few snappers uh, from the close-in reefs now. They're starting to move in, of course, this time of year. Um, and also, uh, on the 35k mark on the hard, they're getting a lot of amberjack. Um, uh, jigging, whole live boat seem to be the way to go. Yeah. It's nothing like a good session of digging to wear you out and then just at the end of the <laughs> session hook up a 15 kilo amberjack. That's all you need. You don't have, <laughs> yeah. have enough strength left to lift a, a midi. Well, listen, well, right. Yeah. Hard work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, anyway, the beach is all too... They've been a bit quiet too, but it's been pretty flat. Uh, it's only about a half a metre of surf along the beaches. Um, uh, yeah, flat as a pound, as they say. Yeah, you can't get wet going surfing for that. That's too small. No, no, no. we see them with their longboards out and they're just having trouble even standing up on longboards. But, uh, yeah, um, the river, it's a bit quiet at the moment too. Uh, the brim, of course, the action's really come on with the brim. Um, yeah, down around the, the Black Banks and Channel Island, uh, probably the best place to fish. Um, you got the run-up tide most of the morning, so I oh, will run out tide, it's about half and half, you'll get a bit of run up this morning, and then the run out tide um, the first couple of hours of the run out seem to be pretty good um, yeah, use uh, strips of mullet this time of year, about the best bait, um, don't burly the uh, fella uh, they say, oh, burly with pellets and all sorts of things, if, if you throw them, especially chalk pellets they seem to They'll blow up in the in the fish's gut, and, and uh, especially brim. They haven't got a real big gut, fish, as you know, but uh, they'll blow up and put them off the feed. And, uh, the best way to do it is get a um, an onion bag, keep all your um, all your frames, uh, prawn shells, crab shells, and you dump them into your into an onion bag and tie it to your anchor. Just fish the one anchor with your three rods over the back. And, just the smell going down attracts a fish and it doesn't put them off the bite. There's a tip for you. Um, there's a few trevally too on soft plastics. Uh, I haven't heard of anything else. Uh, really, you know, it's been very quiet. The crabs are still all right at the moment. I've got a few crabs during the week. Karen's uh, smiling. Karen is smiling. You might even see him this oh, week. No. 
Yeah, a lot of people put the pots away this time of year, but uh, the crabs you do get, they, they're not as prolific as summer, of course, but the crabs you do get, uh, the legal crabs, are full of meat. They've been really good, Kira. Um, fisheries had a blitz during the week uh, down in the Pummerston Passage and got nearly 200 illegal or abandoned traps pulled out of the water. So, yeah, in about a month's time down there, you'll be catching plenty of crabs. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they, they really had a big clean up but it's not hard to make a trap legal you just put your name on the plate and, and your name and address on on the uh, on the trap itself and the name on the plate that's all you need to do and you're legal and uh, yeah, a lot of them were abandoned too they can tell because of the, the growth on the floats and, and no bait in the traps and, and you know and, and even barnacles growing on the traps so yeah, uh, so uh, just make sure you're legal because they're liable to go through the Maruti. They did a couple of years ago and they got 100 out of the Maruti. I remember around about Christmas time. Uh, just mainly didn't have the right markings on their boats and traps. Uh, yeah, that's about it, fellas. It's okay. a little bit quiet this time of year, yeah. Bongan Bongan is the name of that cove. Bongan Bongan. Yeah, B-O-N-G-I-N. Pit Porter. In pit water. In pit water. Okay. Anyhow, yeah, no well, worries. Uh, 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 Yvonne? Yes? Please hang up on me early, will you? Hang up on you early? Yeah, because I tipped the cowboys and then changed. I guess uh, I've, I've, the the sun. Sun. <laughs> <laughs> I've got cowboys. <laughs> Thanks, gang. We'll talk to you soon. Okay. All right, we'll talk to you next week, fellas. Hopefully we'll have a bit of a better report. But, uh, yeah, That's all good. We take, yeah. take it as it is. Yeah, apparently there was a record number of whales that part here, mm. so you missed them. <laughs> <laughs> they were in a peloton. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> See ya. 20, 28 minutes away from seven. A man, I need to apologise. All I'm going to say, Kieran, is I got the message way, way too late, but I will ring him today. Greg Reed, good morning. How are you? Hello, Sailor. <laughs> Sailor. How's your boat going? It's going, it goes, goes okay. Good, good, good. <laughs> Yep, yep. Got a motor. I'll tell you how mine goes about uh, four o'clock Monday afternoon. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Good fun, isn't it? Yeah, oh, it's great fun. We, we, Brendan's been coming down and giving me a hand, which I'm really, really grateful for. And we've been mucking around on Sydney Harbour, just getting used to it and checking out the rigging and putting it through its paces. It's been awesome fun. But how's fishing down the south coast? Well, it depends what you're targeting. Um, estuary side of things, yeah, be quiet, but that's just where we are in, in the cycle. Um, June, July. Certainly, like, I generally give the basin a miss from about mid-July through to about mid-September. It's not So there's not fish there, because there are, and there's um, there's good blackfish down at Sussex, but I target my blackfish somewhere else. Um, but the brim, like, the, the, the general... Basically, the basin just goes a bit dormant this time of year. Don't yeah. know why. Because um, we have other systems around here that fish... Um, pretty good for this time of year but it just seems to every year slow right down and uh you know maybe i'll need to go and do another you know july and august just to remind myself why i don't generally fish there in july and august because it's been a couple, <laughs> couple of years but um look there's still good brim around you've just got to fish at this time of year you've got to fish sort of five meter long three pound liters really really long really light liters and um fish really slow it does tend to be more of a vibe or, or a blade bite at um, at this time of year, um, and and just load load your blades up with scent and um, and and have like twenty second pauses in between lifts, really slow. Uh, having said that, there's still some big tailor in the system. Like they are year round, unless we get a big flood, they won't go anywhere. Um, so it, it's always worth having a good sinking stick bait with you. Um, I generally have uh, a rod with about four to seven kilo, ten pound braid, and then about sixteen pound leader, and then a foot of about forty or sixty pound uh, uh, mono, not wire, because wire makes them shy away, and that'll hopefully keep the stick bait intact. Because some of these fish in here, are, you know, we regularly get the sixty centimetre tail around the basin, so 
Um, and follow the birds. Follow the little crested terns. If you see uh, two or three working one area, is guaranteed money in the bank. There's Taylor in, Taylor in that space. Um, still plenty of salmon and Taylor on the beach. Um, geez, I don't know if you guys have seen some of the footage of... Um, of you know the far south coast and what's happening down there with the salmon run at the moment. Yeah, it's crazy. Ah, uh, it's just amazing, isn't it? You know, and it's not a. I think maybe the size of those patches down there this year are you know an extra large, but the far south coast, particularly between sort of Burmy and um, Marimbula, that the, the salmon actually seem to come into the estuary to spawn. Um, so really, what do we know about them? Um, but the size class up here at the moment is. He's a bit down. Like there's, there's still plenty of salmon and tailor on the beaches, but a lot of the salmon are only around about that sort of 50 centimetre class as opposed to those, you know, those sort of 60 centimetre plus. Yeah. Um, but uh, plenty of those on the beaches at the moment. Uh, no, no dramas about that. There's been reports of good snapper in close. Um, I recommend for the snapper, you've got the, um, you got the Premino, um that's the Pro Lua Premino XT, the extra tough. So they're your jerk baits. But um, any of the jerk baits work. Same again, only fish 10 pound braid, um, 14, maybe 16 pound leader, a one sixth head, and any of those reefs out the sort of 20 to 30 metres are holding fish at the moment. Um, the only thing is, like, we are in, dead set, we are in the peak of the, the greatest procession just, just marching up the east coast at the moment. I saw a group of over a dozen whales together last night on sunset like, oh. like a dozen together um so like, that's serious, <laughs> hazard, serious hazard of navigation particularly if you've got a keel boat um but i'll just there's no way known to man i'll be powering along in the dark at the moment no it's just it's it's just you should it shouldn't be happening it's a um, formula for disaster isn't it it is it is. There's just, you know, I heard quotes the other day, there's 40,000 plus now. I mean, I know when I was skipper and whale watching boats, there was, there was fewer than 10. So um, the last couple of years, uh, the, the population explosion for the humpbacks particularly has uh, been quite incredible. So uh, you get out to any advantage points if, you know, if you're bringing, if you're bringing um, partners down that don't fish. Um, or if you just want to go and, you know, just check out some good stuff. It's, but it's a great time of year to be on the water too. Um but uh, anywhere out the front, a bit of a um, bit of a great weekend for boating. Anyway, the swell's right down at the moment; it's less than a metre. Um, Westerlies today, west northwest today, probably get 15 knots, probably a bit more tomorrow. So if you have if you have your pick, you, I suppose you'd say today's the pick. Um, there's still a few good kings around the headland. Still a few bonito kicking around too, from all reports. And uh, the water's just crystal clear. It's still 19 degrees. So it's beautiful, warmer in than out at the moment. There's just you know. If you want to surf, I'd, I'd say you better go and do some gardening this weekend and get some brown points <laughs> around the house because you're going to be sadly disappointed there isn't any. It's pretty much technically flat at the moment. So good weekend for boating and fishing. Sydney Harbour was a lake yesterday. It was an yeah. absolute lake. Could not get a breath of wind at all. Yeah. Yeah, I just wonder when this patch is going to break. This is almost like our... Um, our April weather we're having yeah. in June. Yeah, you know, it's we, crazy. We just get like six weeks of these big high pressure systems just parking themselves right over the top of us, and then they generally break with an east coast low. So um, yeah, we're in that we're in that phase at the moment. One of these big highs is just parked over the top. So some pretty glorious weather. We've been. It, it, it's cool. But um, if you can find a patch in the uh, sun out of the shade, you can get away with shorts and t-shirts still. So it's um, it's pretty glorious. Great comprehensive report. Thanks for your time this morning. And I will give you a buzz. Sorry, I only got that late, that message. Oh, no, no, no dramas. Yeah, no, no dramas at all. What about the Pro Lewis? Where can we get them? Hey, get a bit anywhere. anywhere these days. <laughs> That's what I like to hear. Got nearly 300 stores in Australia now. So. Giddy up. Well That's done. Just ProLuaAustralia.com.au. Check me out. That'll be much appreciated. See you, Reedy. Okay, have a good one. See you, mate. State of Origin. The rivalry without rival. Adds another chapter in 2023. Munster into the backfield. The Hammer scores the try. Can Queensland steal the series? Or will New South Wales turn the tide in Brisbane? Comes down. They've got a shift. Luoy shifts out the front. Scores. The battle for state supremacy resumes Wednesday, June 21. Join Origin Live for all the game to action at Suncorp Stadium from 7pm. 
Australia is having a conversation about the referendum being held later this year. So what's it about? It's about whether we should change the constitution to recognise the first peoples of Australia by setting up an Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander voice. The voice will be a permanent body. And it'd give independent advice to the parliament and government on matters that affect First Nations people. Be ready for the conversation. Visit voice.gov.au. Authorised by the Australian Government, Canberra. Polaris End of Financial Year deals are on now with great savings across the range. Get $1,000 free accessories on the two-seat Ranger 570, the three-seat Ranger Northstar and the six-seat Ranger Northstar Crew. Get 2,000 free accessories on the upgraded 23 Ranger Diesel and a whopping $3,000 free accessories on the Ranger XP1000. On top of that, finance is also available to approve purchases at a 6.99% rate. Don't miss out. See your local Polaris dealer. Polaris. Think outside. Installery. 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 Well, the hottest of hot, hot party you've ever seen. Ring comes on steady, hot and strong. It just keeps on and on. Ream's been proudly manufacturing here in Australia for over 80 years. Install a Ream. Install a Ream. So ask your plumber for Ream, Australia's number one. Good for the game tomorrow? Nah, still trying to sell the car. Oh, give me your phone, let me do it. Yeah, good luck. Car sales, instant offer. Car sales, what? Instant offer. You can skip creating an ad, dealing with buyers and waiting for a decent offer all weekend. Is that the offer for my car already? Yep. Now just take it to one of the official buyers nationwide, get it looked over, and the money drops the next business day. So I'll see you at the game then? Yeah, see you at the game. Car sales instant offer. The hassle-free way to sell your car. Decency supply. With Angel Flight, hundreds of needy, seriously ill Australians don't have to spend painful days on the road. Angel Flight pilots fly them there, free of charge turning miles into minutes. So please, support the work of Angel Flight or get involved as a volunteer pilot or driver and help bring blessed relief to people who so desperately need some. News, Sport, Talk. 2SM 1269. More of High Tide on 2SM and the Super Network. Thanks to Shimano. Tomorrow's tackle today. If only I could go. It is 17 minutes away from 7 here on High Tide. Now, Kieran, because the weather has been so warm, Maritime and Marine Rescue and everybody have been so busy at the moment. And there are a couple of little things that we can do to help them out, dear sir. Let's catch up with Transport New South Wales Team Leader for Boating Education, Gavin Beck, who joins us online. Gavin, good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time. Yeah, good morning, gentlemen, and thank you as well. Uh, Pleasure to be here. Now, obviously, we harp on all the time uh, about life jackets, but how does one maintain them? How does one know when their use-by date has been and gone? Yeah, um, life jackets are continuing to be uh, fairly topical and, and dare say, um, one of our biggest um, issues on on New South Wales waterways. So a number of things um, where where appropriate and we have to... uh, We did see last weekend uh, we had a statewide... Uh, bar crossing and uh, inland focused education and compliance campaign and, and that um, matter as far as wearing your life jacket uh, checking and servicing did did come up again as, as pretty much the, the number one issue so uh, as I said wearing it um, certain situations uh, um, example crossing a coastal bar uh, all persons on board the boat um, must wear a level 100 life jacket or type 1 and in the old terms. So, Gavin? Uh, uh, yeah. What is the problem? We've been talking about it yeah. for 35 years. Yeah. I've been talking about the safety factor of wearing a life jacket, putting it on when you cross the bar, and the dangers of not having it on. And the dangers of trying to put one on when you fall in the water right now when about... Within 60 seconds, you'll suffer with hypothermia. And, and Gavin, yesterday I was out on Sydney Harbour. There was no wind. We were doing a yep. sailing test on, on my sailing boat to make sure that I've got to do a, uh, a small little offshore run. And I said to my crew, we're wearing life jackets for this because we're testing. There was 
legally we're not required at that particular point, but we just felt it was an extra safety issue. And, hey, you don't even know they're on half the time. Look, that, that's correct. Um, uh, one of the, the things that, that I've observed, I've been in this role for, for nearly 10 years, is, is I guess boating is, is an attitudinal thing. Um, and, um, you know, driving a car, you do this every day, and consciously, subconsciously, you know, you're obeying, or most people are obeying the road rules. Boating's a recreational pursuit, and I, I really do think um, that mindset uh, comes into it, Kieran, as far as... As far as um, uh, safety and, and, and a little bit of complacency too. So, you know, wearing the jacket, be it a foam life jacket or an inflatable life jacket, um, um, you know, you, I cannot underestimate how important it is. Your number one piece of safety gear, and particularly this time of year, um, cold shock uh, leading to hypothermia. As you say, um, you go into, you know, six six or eight degree water and you, you're very quickly going to know about that. Uh, that's where that life jacket is. So mate, important. it's got to be a mind over matter. Now, yeah. what, well, I grew up not wearing a seatbelt, mm. right? But now, the first thing I do is when I get in the car, before I turn it on, I put the seatbelt on because otherwise I'm likely to forget about it because it's not something that I've done all my life. You yeah. know, it's just a mind never matter thing that you've got to be conscious of. Certainly, and, you know, uh, that's that's one of our, our, our key tools focus is 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 where it and, and and develop a routine put put the life jacket on before you hop in the boat yeah. and and as you say i you know I'll, I'll tell anyone this i've been to my local coffee shop here in nelson bay not once but twice wearing uh my work inflatable life jacket so, <laughs> you're um, at nelson bay no wonder you're a good bloke <laughs> uh, yeah, beautiful nelson part of the bay, world uh, god's country it, although a little chilly this morning 1.1 1. 1 degrees feels like <laughs> well listen um, Mate, a bit of advice. Yeah. Be careful about going into Salamander Bait and Tackle. Reckon, uh, reckon I might get trapped and spend a bit of money. If you go in there, yeah. ask for Baldrick. Yeah, not a, <laughs> hey, not look, a problem. on a serious note, boating maintenance is a big deal too. And and arguably not enough of that's um, being looked at the way it should be. Yeah, look, and I'm going to tackle this one two ways. Um, those who continue to vote over winter and, and we're seeing um, I just heard your last um, report we're seeing really really sustained good conditions over winter two big things for mine yes make sure your engines um, regularly serviced another thing is uh, biggest cause of breakdowns um, are and continue to be stale fuel and your battery definitely um, you know keep an eye on that and um, and turn over your boat engine I'd, you know, I dare say the neighbours will hate me, but before you even go to the boat ramp. Oh. Uh, the, the second uh, thing is if you might be, it's colder, putting your boat away, putting it to bed for winter. So definitely uh, recommend, it's a good time to check and go through all your safety gear. That's one thing, but with your boat, um, either, you know, you can decant the fuel, use it for other things, or buy a really good fuel stabiliser. Again, um, that's looking after it for when you might fire it up again in, in three or four months' time. And not only, you know, looking after your motor and the maintenance of your boat, but general safety equipment too, always important to keep up to date with, with that. And I, I was in a, in a boating shop and uh, a couple were buying some flares that, mm. you know, the tick the box flares. And there was so much debate on, on what they should have on board the boat. It's quite simple, to orange, to red. They come in a packet. It's very, they're not expensive, not a big drama. Just get them. Yeah, correct. And and uh, people are, are confused, and, and I'll admit I've, I've done a double take. The box of flares will say enclosed waters, and they think, well, that's for uh, boating, you know, within Port Stevens. In, in maritime terminology, the box or the term enclosed means up actually up to 15 miles. Um, so, that, like you say, too red, too orange, make sure they're in date. Your out-of-date ones, hold on to them. Later in the year, about October, November, We'll be continuing our expired flare collection program across New South Wales. The other items that do go out of date um, are your distress beacon, your EPIRB. So if you haven't looked at it for a while, pull it out of the bracket. Um, guarantee you won't set it off. Um, and on the side, it's got a battery symbol with month and year. It must be within the uh, manufacturer battery date. Uh, so those flares... 
uh, EPIRB. And the other thing, you know, alternate out of date is your annual servicing on your inflatable life jacket um, must be serviced on or before uh, 12 months or in accordance uh, by yourself or in accordance with the manufacturer instructions. Gavin, you make so much sense. Don't do that again, please. Okay, uh, can't help it, it's my job. <laughs> and we're glad it is. Thanks very much for your time this morning. We really do appreciate it. Yeah, and thank you, and um, have a great day. You too. From Transport New South Wales Maritime, uh, the team leader for a boating education, Gavin Beck, joining us. Hey, let's continue with things and head further north, well, up to where Swanee is. Let's catch up with Paul Burt. Good morning to you, mate. How you doing? I'm not doing too bad. Kieran in the studio with us today. He's going to have to make me a cup of coffee. Isn't he a great boss? You've got to mate, love this guy. Mate, Seriously. He's a, he's a great guy. Oh, sorry about that. But it, mate, it's a fantastic stuff. That wasn't a can. Well, that was a can opening there, Grant. But what it was, <laughs> it's, it's my pineapple juice for the morning run, right? Ah, uh, yeah. yeah. I'll believe you. <laughs> 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 All right, mate. Right. What, what a week it's been, buddy. It's been absolutely brilliant. You know, lots of good fishing, lots of great weather. But gee, it's been cold. How's, how cold's it been down for you guys? Yeah, it's been it's been Arctic. We've had uh, westerly, southwesterly winds pumping in around about ten to fifteen knots most of the days. Sometimes getting up to around uh, about twenty knots, depending on where. Certainly off offshore. Um, it's been a little bit uh, more hectic, but that hasn't stopped the fish. All everybody's reporting that there's fish just jumping into your boat at the moment. Don't, don't even put don't even put your prawn on a hook. They'll jump into the boat to get them at the moment. Is it like that up there? Mate, I had a mate of mine, believe it or not, this bloke, right, Timmy Harris. We, him and I went out fishing the other day, and uh, we had a Pat Nosser rig on, and, um, mate, he, he just rigged up, and he's um, he had to get his re- like a bit of an overrun off his reel, off his overhead. Uh, so he's just chucked the line in the water, dropped it down 25, 30 metres, or feet, I should say, and no bait on. And, uh, mate, next thing, the, it's, as he's dropped it down, it's just taken off. He caught a tuna. Oh, you're kidding. The, the tuna ate the hook because the hook had a little bit of a shine on it. It glistened at that one minute as it was shooting down to the deck and boom. And, uh, look, he got his overrun out and he caught a fish without even using bait. That's pretty good going. I saw a guy during the week. It's funny you mentioned that. I saw a guy during the week. I wish I had saved the video. Um, mm. he, caught a, he caught a fish with a hook and a spanner. He put the spanner on the line and yes. gave it a little bit of trace with a hook on the end. And it was a 13 mil shifting, a 13 mil spanner. Um, um, well, mate, you know what? That, that'll work. It drill, drill one of the ends out. I remember Mel, Mel, Mel Douglas, I think it was, back in the back in the, the heyday when he'd travel around the top end of the country, um, and, and you know, with a with a with a heap of backpackers, and yeah. he, um, before his boat burned down, and mate, he'd, he'd, he'd rip a bit of um, you know red um, underwear off his undies and tie that, and put a hook around it, and chuck it out and uh, catch Barramundi in Trevally. <laughs> Mate, if you're in the right spot, you're going to do okay. If the fish yeah. are hungry, they're going to bite anything. But yeah. say, we, we, we bombed out the other day too, Grant. This isn't all about scales and tails. It's all about, you know, having the opportunity to give it a crack. And we gave it a damn good crack the other day. I had a red-hot fisherman there, Gordon Triplett from Garmin. He was on the boat. and Mate, we, we bombed out. And all the other charter boats bombed out. It was an afternoon bite. We went out in the morning, so that was unfortunate. But, uh, you know, it was on, but um, we got a few fish, but not as many as we would have hoped. Uh, yeah. So, you know, it happens. It happens to, to everyone. So take heed. If you're sitting at home at the moment, you think you've been out fishing a couple of times this week and nothing's been happening and you're wondering what you're doing wrong, maybe yeah. nothing at all. It's just the way the biorhythms yeah. work. As, mate, 100%. 100%. That's just the way it goes. It's a, you go with the flow and give it a crack and see how it travels and... Unfortunately, mate, it's um, you know, it happens to it happens to everyone. Hey, when, I was, uh, when I was growing up, PB, with uh, yeah. I had my um, my dad had a little Quintrex uh, runabout, right, and just had a nine point nine on the back of it, and we yeah. we used to just take it out into Botany Bay, me and my mates, and we'd go fishing. Some days we'd catch fish, other days we didn't, but every day we had a great time. Sometimes it's not yeah. just about catching the fish; it's just yeah. about chilling out and enjoying being in the outdoors. Absolutely. You remember the top, Tom Gleeson and his and one of his mates, I think they did a, a, a fishing show. And I, know, I know we have a fishing show called Step Outside, and that's awesome. But um, they did a show called A River Somewhere. It was on SBS um, many, many moons ago. I'm going back 20 years ago. And these guys, mate, they would go tracking through the Alps down in you know, western sort of uh, you know, Victoria or wherever, targeting fish and other things. They then ended up in Scotland and New Zealand, all these beautiful places. 
hardly ever caught a fish, but they always, it was a river somewhere it was called, and, and um, you know, they'd had the fly rod there. It was just the scenery was amazing. And, mate, they also, they just had a good time. And it was just, it was theatrical to watch. It was, it was amazing. It was just sit back, watch and enjoy and have a giggle. And uh, that ended up in the pub. But, that, you know, that's just the way it was. It wasn't about the fish. <laughs> no fish in it. <laughs> Every now and then you might see something jump on their line. They probably bloody well bought it. <laughs> Speaking of which, I don't want to keep you from your morning beer. So where can we go and watch a movie chasing? <laughs> Mate, look, the flatter on the bike, we've got some beautiful flatties on massive lures. Um, we've got some big soft glides in there at Anaconda at the moment. They're just sounding crushing it. Also, uh, Johnny uh, Costello, uh, we took him out and did some filming with him yesterday um, down to northern New South Wales using his ones from my lure box. And they crushed the uh, the big lizards, got some 80 centimetre plus fish on his big um, big lures. So the soft glides are all working well at the moment. So the flathead, you know, coming into the, the, the cool months of the year, they love to get on those flats uh, on the run outside, foot of water, maybe getting down to two feet and just slowly jiggle these big big lures back. And, man, they, these things crush it. Um, there's also some really good catches of luderick around at the moment. They love this time of the year. And uh, if you want to get out there and try your luck for Taylor, a few Taylor sell early something to move up on the beach. Did you see that footage the other day of all the Australian salmon in the estuaries of yeah. uh, Victoria, New South Wales? Uh, unbelievable. Isn't it insane? I, I just think that, that, like, you know, it's been a long time since I've worked on high tide and just coming back over the last six months, the – the, the biggest thing, the biggest difference I've noticed from, you know, what, uh, 10, 15 years ago when I was working with uh, Kieran and, and Blakey or Shuey back in those days, um, yeah. is that it just seems to be so much more pro- prolific. Mate, I think what the government has done with um, fish management is is great. You know, we're seeing, uh, you know, bag limits have become good. Um, I, I still think we should increase the size limit on various species and lower the bag limit. So you're going out there and you know, New South Wales to catch 30 centimetre snapper and 10 of them is ridiculous. Queensland, you can you can you can catch less than half that, uh, and they've got to be bigger. So you know what I mean? Like it makes it difficult for an angler to to go through all the costings of fuel, boat, maintenance and everything like that. But it's not always about going out there and bringing back an esky, ginormous esky full of fish because that's what led to the control of where it is today. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years, there won't be fish to catch. But I think just monitoring it and, and keeping it uniform from one state to another is going to alleviate a lot of the issues um, and, and also in, enhance anglers' uh, capabilities of getting that trophy fish. Yeah, yeah. And, and also make it a hell of a lot easier for people to remember too, instead of having to remember two different bag limits and two, oh, you know, two different sizes yeah. if it's all yeah. uniform around the country. Yeah. I, I suppose the argument is, though, uh, yeah. why would you want to drop the bag limit when there's flathead everywhere down here at the moment? Uh, look, you know, um, well, that's the thing, you know, your, your bag limit, but if you increase the size limit between so – New South Wales is different to Queensland. Queensland, yeah. you've got – 40 centimetre minimum, up to 70 or 75 or something. So, you know, in that range, you can keep them. Above that, they're big breeding females. Yeah. But you can get to Evans Head, uh, where the big females over a metre live, and you can dong one at a metre five. You know, <laughs> you, there are, there's, there's different ways about it, but also the fish uh, that they're, they're deemed to be breeders at that, you know, that sort of um, 70 plus up. Yeah. Although I've caught fish that are 60 and fully rode up as well. So, look, you know, I, I, I just... I don't know. It's got to be more uniformed across the board. But yeah. Queens, we have more boating fraternity. It's the highest amount of registered boats per capita, over a million, um, you know, in the southern hemisphere. So this 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 sector in southeast Queensland is very heavily trafficked with anglers. So we need to monitor that. It's different to say Coffs Harbour, say Port Macquarie, Evanshead, Yamba. Those areas there are, are minuscule compared to what we have up here. So up here. You know, conditions need to be a little bit different in the in the settlement of uh, of, of fish catches and tags. And oh, Bernie, you're going to fire up Kieran again, mate. We're going to have to leave it there. The music's playing. Don't forget, they have got a marathon of uh, step outside on at the moment. Looks like a good day to get out there and enjoy it if you're going to do so. Uh, please do it safely. Thank you very much for tuning into today's show. Hope you found it not only informative but a little bit entertaining along the way, Kieran. And we will be back tomorrow. And please keep your eye on that sky and wear a life jacket. But as sure as yappies bite your toes. 
This boyhood story had to end 